What's going on guys? Today we're going to be doing the Genshin Impact tier list version 3.4 A and S tier. Again, this is going to be as Constellation 0 for 5 stars and Constellation 6 for 4 stars, all with using 4 star weapons in our consideration for this power level ranking tier list. If you're wondering why any of these characters are here, check out my other video. Leave a comment if you disagree and you totally think this tier list is crap. And that is totally fine. So we're going to start off with the Geo Bros. The Geo Bros to me are the quintessential representation of what the A tier is. They are characters that, you know, perform very well. They are very good in multi-target, very good in single target. The only thing that holds them back from being higher is, I would say, their lack of a grouper. Um, they don't have a good way to bring enemies together. You can obviously tech in a Venti, but it doesn't work that well. Tech in a Sucrose or Kazwa. But there's so little synergy with, with these teams, they're really underusing those animal characters. So if we get a Geo Grouper one day, if we get a, anything that synergizes better with these characters, you know, that could definitely bump them up. But as is, you know, their damage is good. Damage is comparable to Hu Tao in... Uh, or not Hu Tao, to Yoimi and single target, which is very good. And But they also perform well in AoE. Ito's slashes hit so high and so far. So it's really, really cool. So I like them. They are solid. Next, we're going to have, similarly, we have Wander, Zhao, and Farzan. And this one gave me pause. I had to think about these guys a lot. Zhao, I definitely think, is a better character than Farzan. Um, he performs better in AoE, he performs almost as good as single target, and he just feels a lot better to play. And he also synergizes extremely, extremely well with Scaramouche's signature support, Farazon. The problem is, when if you're summoning for Farazon, you're going to get probably a constellation, if not two constellations of Scaramouche, depending on how lucky you are. And at that point, it's like, should I use my Constellation 1 or 2 Skarmouche, or should I use my Zhao? I almost think you could still use your Zhao, but why roll for Zhao at that point? But again, this is not a value tier list, this is a strength tier list. Um, I'm very excited to test out Zhao. My friend has Constellation 5 Farozon and, Const and, 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 uh, and Zhao. So I'm excited to test that out and compare and see, you know, is it really even better than this? But I have him here for now. If you guys totally disagree and you think he's better than a lot of these other characters, then definitely let me know. <clears throat> but that's where I have him right now. Next we have Beto. Beto is a very good character in AoE. She doesn't get as much from Dendro as other Electro characters, which is kind of why she's kind of behind them. But still performs very, very well, especially I, I, like, I wasn't a Taser Team believer for a long time until I built Beto properly. And she is absolutely insane. Um, if you're a low spender, she's insane with the Serpent Spine, which lore-wise and looks-wise fits amazingly with her. Um, I really, really like Beto. She's a really, really good character. Next is one that may surprise you. It's actually Razor. This is full EM Razor, Thundering Furry, as someone referred to, or EM Razor or Virgin Razor, and he does really, really good damage. The only thing that holds him back from being higher is you have to play a bit of Circle Impact. You have to stay in Bennett's Circle, otherwise his Power Infusion doesn't apply, and if you have to run outside the Circle, he loses a lot of damage, and he's, he doesn't really synergize with a grouper, um, So, but with Nahida, that, that does solve some problems a bit. So, um, again, he may be even higher than this. I'm working on building him right now. I'm excited to test it out, but I think he's a really, really good character and can perform really well. Um, similarly, Toma is just going to be right above him, and that Toma performs extremely, extremely well in version teams. He's not tied to that specific circle. I think Razor does a bit more damage, but Toma's not tied to that specific circle. And you can also use on-field Nahida, which potentially could create more blooms. So I'm not totally sure about that. I'm, I'll test them both once I build them eventually, but... Uh, my Toma is built as shield bot Toma, so we'll have to wait and see. But Dendro Traveler is going to be the next character. Dendro Traveler, very, very, very strong character. Dendro is a very, very powerful element, and Dendro Traveler is basically middle of the pack. I was going to say Malcolm in the middle, but I, you know, comment if you get that reference, but that doesn't really make any sense. So <laughs> kind of the middle of the road Dendro character, but because Dendro as an element is so, so broken, that puts Dendro Traveler at a very, very high ceiling. It does suffer from that circle impact, but if it's if the burst is infused with Hydro, it can be a pretty big radius, so very, very strong char strong character. Works great in Hyper Bloom, Quicken, Aggravate, Burgeon, all sorts of Dendro teams, so very versatile, very, very good character. Next is actually Sino. Sino is pretty underrated, in my opinion. Um, Sino, I, I really like Sino. I like Sino best in Hyper Bloom teams with Nahida, Yalan. Um, I, I really, really like those teams. This very, feels very, very strong to me. Can be even almost as good as Double Hydro Hyper Bloom, which is probably, I think, the strongest team in the game. His contribution to that team just isn't that impactful compared to other things you could be running. I do think it's very good, and I think he's very underrated. Maybe even if we get a Dendro Shielder, 
at some point. It could be he could be even better with some aggravate stuff. I do think he's very very strong. I don't think he's worse than Kaching. Uh, I think him and Kaching belong almost at the same point. He's kind of just a little bit better in single target with because of hyper bloom stuff, and she's a bit better in AOE. So you know I don't think he's necessarily worse. I think that he functions very very well. And then next we're gonna have Yaimiko. Um, I do think Yaimiko is better than Kiching, but I do think she feels worse to play. <laughs> I like Yaimiko as a sub DPS in Raiden teams. That's my favorite role for Yaimiko because in aggravate teams you kind of have to do some auto attack stuff and I really really don't like her for auto attacks, but that's kind of where I have Yaimiko. Then we've got Yao Yao. Yao Yao is an awesome character. She provides almost as good Dendro application as Dendro Traveler and also heals you for a really really good amount. She's Really, really good in Neelu teams, but she's really, really good at Aggravate teams, and she can even be good in Hyper Bloom teams. I don't like her as much in Hyper Bloom teams. I think, you know, her her Dendro application is not that crazy in Hyper Bloom teams, but as a solo Dendro, of course. But um, she's a really, really strong unit. Um, really, really like her for that. Um, next, I've got Zhang Li, and Zhang Li is a really, really interesting character because I know a lot of people. Um, really, really like Zhongli, and a lot of people, especially deep into the theory crafting community, really, really don't like Zhongli. And I'm somewhere in the middle, um, although I can, I can see both sides of it, right? Because he provides unbelievable utility that's really unmatched by any other character. Like, every other shielder has sort of like this drawback, like that its shield is weak, they don't do enough buffing, they don't do this and that. Zhongli has an incredibly strong shield, some crowd control with his burst, and he does some really, really pretty solid buffing with the debuff from his Jade Shield. He's a really, really good part of Hu Tao teams, Zhao teams, Ganyu teams, and, and some other teams. And so the reason why he's landed in at you know the higher end of A tier is because he's just not part of any top top teams, right? If if you look at the top top performing teams, Zhongli is not really a part of them. Even for, for something like Freeze, you know, you don't need a Zhongli. For something like a Raiden, you don't need you don't need a Zhongli because of her interruption resistance. For something, a lot of things that have Sing Cho don't need Zhongli because Sing Cho's resistance to interruption is enough. A lot of times you're running Bennett, you don't need a shielder and a healer. So just for those types of reasons, Zhongli, his best teams are not S tier teams, right? If there comes a character that's S tier and they pretty much need Zhongli, then Zhongli might be, I might consider him to be an S tier character, but it's mostly because his best teams are kind of A tier teams. They're very, very, very strong teams. You know, maybe Geo teams, Zhao teams, Hu Tao double hydro teams. I guess that's a spoiler for one of our other characters, Ganyu teams. Speaking of Ganyu, I don't think Ganyu is as strong as people say she is. Now, I do not have Zhongli, so I have not been able to test Melt Ganyu properly. I say properly because I've tested her with Diona. Uh, I'm not willing to take my Diona past level level 80. I think I have her at. I'm not willing to do it. I didn't like her shield at that level. It got it got absolutely destroyed by the Abyss, and I felt like I could not run uh, Melt Ganyu comfortably at all. I have really really good artifacts. I, I got the Amos bow from Standard Banner. I have not been able to test Ganyu Melt Ganyu at all, and I will have to get Zhongli. You know, and so next time he comes around, I lost my 50-50 and I wasn't willing to spend at the time. But I will be getting Zhongli come hell or high water for Ganyu um, next time his rerun comes because I need to test out Melt Ganyu. Freeze Ganyu, I feel like Freeze Ganyu is okay, but Ayaka Freeze is just so much better. Ayaka Freeze is so much better because in, in content that is ventiable, Ayaka is pretty much just as good. And I and, and and content that is you know Kazuha a bull, um, Ayaka is quite a bit better. Um, just the way that her burst, uh, the way that her burst works, and the way that the damage is all front loaded right there. You know she's still very good. She's you know higher end of A tier, but I just don't think she's quite as good as some people uh, may say. So next character is actually Venti. Venti is in one of those characters that's very very hard to rate. A tier I think is very fair because when the Abyss is not favorable to Venti. He's sort of like almost Hazo tier. He's a Viridescent Venom or Shredder. He does some pretty good damage, some energy recharge. Maybe he's A minus tier, right? He's probably A minus tier. When the content is Ventiable, he's the best character in the game. He's absolutely incredible. You know, I'll definitely be getting Venti next time he comes back. He's he's amazing when he's great and not amazing when he's not great, but he's definitely very, 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 very solid. And there are many, many times where I wished I had Venti. So next is Shen He. Shen He is excellent in Ayaka teams. Um, when I use Shen he and don't use Shen he and Ayaka teams, I absolutely feel the difference. I love Mono Cryo. I think she makes Mono Cryo work. You just put a bit more crit rate on Ayaka, you know, maybe use a crit rate weapon instead of your regular weapon and go to town. It is crazy how much it shreds bosses, how strong she, her quills are. 
Um, people talk about her quills running out, but you can do rotations very, very easily where you get two sets of quills per Ayaka burst. And so she does an absolute ton of damage. She makes, you know, she makes Kai and Rosaria feel like really, really much better characters than they are in Freeze. Um, basically, she also scales with your investment. So if you have Miss Splitter on, on Ayaka, she might even be up higher, right? But as it is, if you just run, you know, Ayaka, Kazuha, Shenha, and then, and then a fourth, whether it's Kokomi, Mona, Singcho, or Layla from Monocryo, or Diona from Monocryo, she can be very, very strong. I really, really like Shen He. Ayato is the next one. Ayato, and starting kind of here, is where I was towing the line between A tier and S tier. I really, really like Ayato. He's amazing in Hyper Bloom teams. He's great. He's, he's amazing in Soup teams. My favorite team by far is Soup with Ayato, Fischl, Kazuha, Bennett. I, I, I don't really, really super love him in, in Hyper Bloom teams. I know you can create a lot of Hyper Blooms in Hyper Bloom teams, but... I don't really, really love it. I, I like it, I just don't really, really love it. I think he's very, very good. He's kind of jack of all trades. There's nothing he's really the best at. You know, his teams are not really the best, but he's really, really solid in all sorts of teams. You can run freeze. I think he's a very valuable unit to an account, but I don't think he's the absolute strongest. So that's kind of why I have him in A tier. Um, Kokomi is the next. Kokomi is another character that I don't have, but I will be getting her when he come, she, she comes back. And similar thing, if you're, similar thing to Zhang Li, if you're running freeze optimally you don't need a healer right you, you can i can I, you can get away i really like sing cho and freeze she can be used in burgeon she can be used in many many teams similar to ayato um her best in slot teams are probably nilu teams but i feel one day we'll get a, a hydro character that scales with em next character is going to be hu tao hu tao at the very very top of a tier now listen to me um hu tao is very very strong she is one of the strongest single target teams in the game um, and single target being one of the most important types of enemies to fight because they have a ton of health um, and you require a very strong single target team however she is not the strongest single target team in the game at c0 with a four star weapon at c1 um with staff of homa People like to under underrate those those things. Like they they underrate how they overrate how good she is at C0 and underrate how good she is, um, how much C1 and Staff of Homa helped her. C C1 gives her approximately a 20% damage boost, and Homa he gives her approximately a 30% damage boost. And so that's a 50% damage boost. That's almost C that's C2 Raiden levels almost of a damage boost. It's a really, really, really significant amount of damage. And if you don't have that, she feels good. She does not perform as well as Double Hydro Hyper Bloom at C0, and you know, and, and this this tier list just does not um, just does not take into account constellations and five star weapons, and because of that, she is an A tier character um, at Constellation Zero with you know the Deathmatch or with Dragon's Bane or something like that. Um, maybe down maybe down the road, I I do a tier list like this and I add in you know constellations and five star weapons you know early constellations and five star weapons and kind of put them in as additional separate characters on this list like um let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that so that's where i think hu tao is and she is at the very very top of a tier um that's nothing you know nothing to be upset about so um now we're moving on to the s tier these are in my opinion the strongest uh characters I almost said pokemon <laughs> These are almost the, these are the strongest characters in the game. So starting with Al Hytham, um, Al Hytham hasn't been out that long, and I haven't fully raised him yet. But he is a Dendro character who does a ton of damage, a ton more than Dendro Traveler or Yao Yao, and for that reason, it just bridges that gap into S tier. Um, he's not at the very top of S tier because I think Nahida teams still kind of outpace him a little bit. Uh, but he's very, very extremely strong. Hyper Bloom teams, even his Sprite and Aggravate teams, are very, very strong. <clears throat> Next is actually Kuki. So Kuki, one of the very, very, very few characters uh, released since the 1.0 patch that have made it this high on the tier list. And the reason why she's this high, some people might disagree, but Hyper Bloom, again, one of the strongest teams in the game, and she's not that much worse than using EM Raiden in Hyper Bloom. And there's two benefits to using Kuki over Ra EM Raiden. Is one, you can use your Raiden to do damage on the other side, and that's a very, very good team. Maybe run a national team, maybe run Raiden Hyper Carry, either with Fischl or or Yamiko or something else and she provides healing and you know that and because it's not that much worse and she provides healing based on her EM she has a ton of synergy with Hyper Bloom teams I'm not putting her as high as Raiden I, don't, I, I still don't think she's as good as EM Raiden but she is very very good and she does have 100% uptime at C2 so she's she's really 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 strong and you can also use her on Sino teams as a healer option right or and on other teams as a healer Hyper Bloom proc option so uh, next we actually have Nilu. 
Um, Nilu surprised me. Surprised me because people were talking, you know, a lot of smack about Nilu when she came out. And when I got to testing her, when I got to using her, um, I was absolutely flabbergasted at how good she was. Um, and people underrate the heck out of Nilu. They, they, I know they talk up that she's good, but she is really, really, really impressive. If you haven't use a Nilu, it, it's crazy how everything explodes and dies. And it. And I know people said that that original Abyss was made for her and that's why she felt so good. She has felt that good in every Abyss with, with more than with more than two enemies in it. It doesn't even matter if they're spread out because if you run her with Nahida, she can tag enemies far out and most Hydro characters are able to hit um, at a distance. And so um, she feels insanely good. She even feels adequate in single target where you can use Yalan or Sing Cho to kind of help her with with that um, thing. I would if, if she didn't feel adequate in single target, I would have her in A tier. Uh, but because she does feel adequate in single target with either a Sing Cho or a Yalan, um, you, don't, you don't have to run full EM on them just to have a, a few elemental mastery substats. Um, and she feels she can absolutely get by um, acceptably well on single target scenarios and absolutely decimate multi-target floors. If she gets some more dedicated stuff in the future, I could see her climbing even further because she is almost this good just with four star with with Barbara um, you know Barbara call a dendro main character she's already at least a tier. Never mind when you add Nahida and all the other things. So anyways, I think she's really underrated. Next is Fischl. Fischl is not underrated. She's amazing. She's amazing in Aggravate. She's amazing in Taser. Um, she's just an incredible character. There's not that much that I have to share that other people haven't, but you know, you just plop her skill down. She snapshots. She does a ton of damage. The only thing that really holds her back is I guess her uptime is pretty short. And so she's kind of constrained to teams that have short rotations, but usually teams with short rotations are the best anyways. So um, it doesn't really hold her back very much. So absolutely incredible, incredible character. And she's a positive in terms of battery for your team. Um, next, I have Child and Zhongling. And I'm thinking about it more. I think I'm going to put Zhongling a little bit higher than this, but I'm putting Child here. Um, Child, Zhongling, Bennett, Kazua is one of the strongest AoE teams in the game. I think it's probably rivaled only by Nilu Bloom, but in certain teams, because you have Kazua, Child does pull ahead. Um, so I would still put him ahead of Nilu. It's pretty incredible and his single target team with his nukes on where you can vape his burst is really 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 impressive. I really really like Child. He is so fun to play. Uh, he's very 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 strong. So one of the best teams, one of the best teams in the game. Next we have Sucrose. Very very amazing character. Amazing in Taser, amazing in Hyper Bloom, amazing in Aggravate teams. Yeah, I, I really really like her. For a long time I didn't like her as much because I was using Hakushin Ring instead of Sacrificial Fragments. Um, I really really like Sacrificial Fragments a lot better for her. She's an absolutely incredible character. She might even be deserved to be higher on this list, but um, the next character I have is Ayaka. Ayaka, realistically, I maybe have a bit of a bias towards Ayaka. <clears throat> maybe I should put. I think I think she probably belongs here. <clears throat> but I think when when she when she hits in freeze, uh, when you get those characters grouped up and you put them in Ayaka's blunder and that burst goes off, it's amazing how quickly they just absolutely get decimated. It is it is wild and how you can stack that, especially if you have a Shenha. She functions extremely well in single target scenarios. I don't know. I'll, I'll leave her here for now, but if you think she's a bit lower down on the S tier, that's totally fine. The, the one thing that keeps her up here as well for me is that she is very, very solid in boss target scenarios. I know people don't like her because the bit burst can miss and things like that, but I find, you know, against the Perpetual Mechanical Array, um, against the Dendro Chicken, as long as you time it right, because her burst doesn't last that long, it's not a super, super long time. So as long as you use it, when an enemy appears in that spot, like the Wolf Lord or something like that, as long as you use it when it appears in that spot, um, you can get most of the burst ticks off. It's only against maybe like the Dendro, no, not the Dendro, the, the Chasm Worm. Against that enemy, maybe it doesn't last long enough to hit all of the ticks, but I think even then you can find some openings for that DPS. So that's the only the only time where I feel like she's not as good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we have her there because I think Mono Cryo is pretty underrated for single target scenarios. So next is uh, Raiden. Raiden's here, obviously her performance in National is very, very good. That would probably put her kind of here. Raiden, if, she was, if I was just looking at Raiden Hyper and Raiden National, but Hyper Bloom gives her a really nice boost and 
She is the strongest character in Hyper Bloom. She has great synergy. Um, even though she doesn't use her burst at all, her skill, the, how fast it procs the Hyper Blooms is you know, faster than any other character can. And uh, you know you can build her fully in because you don't need ER on her, so she does the most damage of any Hyper Blooms. And her skill uh, buffs the bursts of your other characters. So if you run her in double Hydro, she's buffing Singcho and Yulan even further, which is really, really insane. So that's what I have her there. So the final character, we're getting down to our top five. Oh, look, I missed Mona. Mona's here. Uh, no, I wasn't secretly saving Mona for S tier. I hope someone got baited. <laughs> Mona, Mona's here. Mona is a solid character in Freeze, but she's not insane. She's not that good in Dendro. Her Hydro application is not that good, but she does a ton of damage. Um, she could be even a little higher. I don't have her yet. I've heard that she's pretty kind of clunky to play and kind of annoying, and she needs too much ER and something something like this. So maybe she's actually here. Um, I could definitely see that. I'll. You know, let me know what you guys think if she should be a little higher. Uh, but yeah, we're getting to the top five characters in Genshin Impact. I think that I'm going to put these two together. So Kazuha and Bennett. So the previous, the old guard. These are the previous um, top characters in the game. You know, they did not fall off. They did not get worse. They are absolutely incredible characters. Um, it's just that Dendro is even stronger. Um, Dendro Hyper Bloom teams are even stronger and what's great about that is that frees up your Kazuo and Bennett for the other side you can use Dendro on one side and Kazuo and Bennett for the other side right um and so yeah I you know it's it's they're, they're incredible right Kazuo's grouping Kazuo's buffing he makes any cryo electro pyro hydro character better when he's on the team pretty much um and bennett anyone who scales with attack he's absolutely invaluable obviously the role consolidation he provides is just insane um you can you you can kind of see with what he provides that is yeah it's, it's just it's just crazy so um now for the top three characters in the game um at number three i actually have nahida and the reason I have Nahida at number three and not number one is because of how strong these other two characters. So I'm going to talk about kind of all three of them at the same time because I think the three of them actually go together to make up the strongest team in the game, um, along with Raiden, um, which is Double Hydro Hyper Bloom. But we'll just talk about why I think Sing Cho is the best first. And the reason why I think Sing Cho is the best is because the things that he provides are just so strong. He provides absolutely unparalleled off-field single target damage. He provides unparalleled Hydro application. He provides really, really good defensive utility, including a 50% damage reduction, which is crazy, um, as well as resistance to interruption. He also synergizes extremely well with the second best character in the game, which is basically, you know, the maybe more attractive version of Sing Cho, depending on, you know, what your opinions are on attractiveness. This is not that type of tier list. But Yelan, also an incredible off-field Hydro applicator damage output, with Sing Cho, she ends up doing even more damage because he reduces the Hydro resistance, and so they have incredible synergy together off-field, so you can use someone else, such as Nahida, to be on-field. And just, just what he provides is just absolutely in incredible. And, you know, Yelan very similarly provides a damage buff instead of that resistance to interruption. Okay, this is this is what really convinced me that Sing Cho was the best character in the game, is if we look at all the teams, right, all the characters, you know, what, who is one of their best partners, right? Who, who is on their best team? Is Sing Cho on Yelan's best team? Yes. Is she on Nahida's best team? Yes. Is she on Bennett's best team? Yes. Kazuo's best team? Often. Raiden's best team? Most of the time. Ayaka's best team? Can be. Um, you could argue Kakomi or, or Mona's better, but it's very, very good at Freeze as well. Um, Sucre's best team? Absolutely. With Taser, Hyper Bloom, Zhongling? Yes. Child? Not really. One of the reasons why Child is so good is he can replace Sing Cho on that team, so you can use Sing Cho on the other side. Official, yes. Nilu, pretty much, yep. Um, Nahida, absolutely. Um, Ahaitham, yes, yes. Um, kind of, can be, not really, but can be used with her. Um, can be, not really the best. Can be, not really, not really, mm, kind of. Um, these ones, less so. But then, yes, 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 no, no, no. Um, and then down here, a lot of them are, right? So you can see most of the top characters in the game use Sing Cho. And I think that kind of tells you all, all you need to know. Why is Nahida not number one? Just because Dendro, uh, main character, Yao Yao, they're, Al Haitham, they're not that far behind. The things she does are not so... Like, I would much rather play 
um, a Hyper Bloom team with with Sing Cho and Yalan without Nahida <clears throat> than I would to run a Hyper Bloom team with Nahida, Kokomi, Ayato without Sing Cho Yalan, personally. So that's why I feel like the, their contribution to those teams is higher than Nahida's. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, these are the top five characters. I think that these are the top five. They could even be considered a tier on their own, but I'm not, I'm not about to do that. So that is the tier list for Genshin Impact 3.4. We will be updating this tier list after 3.8, uh, the end of 3.8, right before Fontaine comes. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know who you disagree with. I'm always building new characters, always testing new characters. I change my mind all the time. This is not, um, set in stone. So this is, this is flexible. Tier lists are flexible. Um, so let me know your thoughts and we will absolutely adjust as things go. Let me know if you'd like to see a value tier list in the future. Take care.